Bernoulli. So we're going to look at Bernoulli equations, which are linear ODEs. This is going to be different than a ODE with linear coefficients, and I hope I didn't use... They both have the, the word linear in them. Hopefully I wrote the other definition slightly differently. So this is going to be a linear ODE of first order. It is of the form... dy over dx, which is a little bit different than the form we're used to seeing, plus uh, p of xy equals q of x. There are no restrictions on p and q. Where p and q are any uh, decent functions. When I say decent, I mean you're able to take derivative or antiderivative as the case, uh, as needed. Uh, what we're going to do now is show that this special term I'm going to write down, it'll look familiar, e to the integral px dx is an integrating factor. So we saw the word integrating factor before. What did that refer to? Exact. Exact. So it was basically a, a term that we multiplied. We used row last section, and we multiplied and got an exact differential equation. So if this is an integrating factor, we have to first uh, by checking exactness. So I'm multiplying that e to the px, integral px dx times my ODE, which is dy over dx plus p of x y equals q of x. Now before we multiply this out, let's think about the actual exactness form that we used last section. So what I'm going to do is flip back in the notes to the beginning of the last section. I'll switch colors, go to blue. dx plus q dy equals zero. Exact when py equal qx. So that should basically be in your no in your cheat sheet somewhere. It's definitely in your notes. So we're gonna need to change the form around. So what's one of the things we definitely have to do? How does our form differ from our the form we're trying to get? Doesn't equal zero. Doesn't equal zero, so that's a serious problem. We gotta get q of x out of here. What about the dx? It's on the bottom. So we need to multiply by dx and get that q of x out of there. So let's deal with the q of x. How do we get q of x out of there? Subtract it. So I'm going to hold off on multiplying until a couple steps later because I don't want to have too much stuff. I'm going to get it in the right form, a similar form, and then I'll, I'll distribute across. So we have dy over dx plus p of xy minus q of x equals 0. And now distribute the dx across. And 
almost there. We can distribute now. So this looks pretty scary. So I need to write down, this is our new P of X and this monstrosity is the new, or the first one's P, the second one's Q, but I can't really use letters P and Q again because they're already in use all over the place. So what else is good, L and M? Let's go with L and M. That'll be two other letters. So I'm going to write this as L dy plus M dx equals zero. And it should be pretty clear what L and M are. But that's L and that's M. So I'm trying to show that LX equals MY. That's what we're supposed to show. So any questions on changing the form or what we're trying to show? So I need to get the x derivative of L How in the world do I take this derivative? What's derivative e to a function? It's e to the function times the, function. the derivative of the function. So it's basically just chain rule. Yeah. The only thing a little strange is this function is an antiderivative. Don't worry about it. You're just going to write derivative of that thing that I just put a box around. So we got e to the same thing, integral px dx, <coughs> times the x derivative of the integral p of x dx. So any questions on that chain rule right there? It really should be similar, very similar to every other chain rule you did. Now, what is this derivative? Derivative of the integral of p of x dx. P of x dx. So derivative cancels out the antiderivative. So I'll write it as px in the front e to the integral px dx, and this is lx. So that was half of the work we have to do. Now we're going to compute my, which is d over dy of m. So this derivative looks kind of crazy. What is the only term I really need to pay attention to? It's a y derivative. There's only one appearance of y anywhere. P of x, y. P of x, y. So really what I need to focus on is this particular y right there that I just made Seahawks colors for you. So we're taking a y derivative. Everything else I didn't highlight is a function of x or basically a constant multiple or a <coughs> constant. So let's go ahead and do the derivative. I don't need to do a product rule here because the second term is a constant with respect to y. So I just have the constant multiple rule that I'm using right here. Any questions on that? So we're going to get <coughs> constant multiple just moves down. 
And now I'm going to work on what's inside these parentheses. What is the derivative of this first term right here? The y derivative of the first term? P of x. P of x. That derivative of y is 1, so it's p of x times 1. What's the derivative of q of x? 0, because it is a function of x, not a function of y. And we just have p of x times e to the integral p of x dx. All right, what can we conclude? It is exact. It is exact. Not obvious before. I didn't see that it was exact, but we just checked it all, and it is exact. So L of x equals P of y, or I should say L sub x equals M sub y. So we have exactness. So this form that I wrote down is super important. I'm going to scroll back up to that form and put a box around it. So what we just did is in that very specific form, it was very easy to get the integrating factor. I didn't have to do a bunch of checking. I didn't have to make sure that something was a function of x or a y or a function of x times y. I didn't have to do any of that stuff. So these are actually pretty straightforward to solve. So we're going to go back to the original form. So this form is super important. It's slightly different than the other forms, again, because dx is not distributed out. So basically, in a way, this is just kind of like a stackness, this a different form? Yeah, it's very much like uh, what we did in chapter 10, except the integrating factor is very easy to compute. I didn't have to do a bunch of checking and making sure you know, I had one of the three cases. This was okay. much faster. Yeah. So it's kind of like an easy version of what's in 10, but your ODE has to be in this form. So you have to start with the ODE like that? Or can we move yeah. it? Oh, you can always change the form around a little bit. Like I can distribute the DX across. So if I just multiply the DX across, what I get is DY. Now one thing is super important. What's the coefficient of DY? One. One. That was not the case with everything in, that we did in chapter 10, so or I should say section 10. In section 10, I don't think any of the dy's had a constant coefficient. They all had some function of, I think, x and y. So that's very different right there. So that wouldn't apply to this right away, if we had like a 2, two dy? I could divide everything by 2. Constants usually aren't a problem, and you can always divide by everything in front of dy dx. Okay. But the question is, what's left over? Would it be in this form? So if I distribute my dx, uh, you know, but first, gy over dx, let's do that subtraction first. So we got p of x y minus q of x equals 0, and then distribute dx. So it's actually a pretty restrictive form. So this would be an alternative version right here. What it really means is y shows up once, exactly one time. And it's going to be as a coefficient of the dx term. The reason it's called linear, what power is y raised to right here? One. one. So what it really is is you could think of this as a slope. It's kind of like my uh, plus b form. So you basically have a coefficient of y plus now, it's not quite constant, but it's constant with respect to y. There are functions of x. So that's one of the reasons this is called linear right there. So let's do some examples. There's going to be quite a bit of overlap with this and a lot of the other forms that we went through. So just because I read a problem in section 11 doesn't mean it's you may be able to go and separate it. You may be able to write it in uh, solve in other ways. So we're going to solve y prime minus 2xy equals e to the x squared. So things look good so far. There's a single y. There's no y squared or any other functions of y. So is this the right form? So I'll rewrite the form. 
y prime plus p x y equals q of x. I just wrote y prime as instead of dy dx. It's the same thing. Do we have the right form? Yes. Yep. So here our p of x is. So we got p x right there and q x right there. But you couldn't have anything over the, to the power of one. As long Otherwise, as it's a function of the variables. So when it comes to y, that's the case. I guess to y. X, you can have a crazy function of x here. Yeah. But y has to just be y to the first power appearing once, uh, not next to y prime. So it would be completely messed up if it would not be a, if there's extra y over here, it would not be a linear ODE. So y can appear once, and it's not next to the derivative term. All right, so p of x is negative 2x, and qx is e to the x. Now this is ambiguous. I don't know which... I don't know if I want to write it. I think we want it e to the x squared, like that. But if you just write exponents out without parenthesizing them, you don't know if it's e to the x squared or e to the x to the square power, which would be e to the 2x. And it's definitely not e to the x squared. So I think the problem is written to parenthesize in this form. Ooh. All right. Let's change the form around. Somewhere up here I did a bunch of work. All this craziness here. So this is basically what we would be, what we should be expecting to see, and it should be exact. So we're going to turn it into this form. So let's find the integrating factor and then multiply it by it. Well, first of all, we'll write this is a linear ODE. Yeah, you, you need to, or else, yeah, how are you going to solve it? I mean, you know, there's different points. I'm not going to, yeah, I'm not going to tell you what type it is. Yeah. So you need some way to classify them. And depending on how you write your cheat sheet out, classification should be a good portion of your cheat sheet. Oh, it's so you could just write different types and how to solve them and put the, like, how to detect if it's the certain type right in with the solution method, or you could have a separate classification area and then you write little arrows to go to the different ways to solve them, something like that. All right, integrate this out. Should be pretty easy. Make sure you put px, not qx up there. So we should get e to the negative x squared. That's the antiderivative of two, negative 2x two is negative x squared. So now we're going to multiply this whole thing out. So distributing across.
and then multiply by dx. So check exactness right now. So we should be looking at an exact ODE. I don't think I use, oh, I did use P and Q. We'll go L and M. So I need to check LX and hopefully that equals MY. So I want you to check both of these right now. Take a derivative. It's important you check these because if I messed up on computing my integrating factor, it'll be obvious here. So you don't want to keep going if you made a mistake. So you're going to find these derivatives to be very similar to what they were when we did that example. Basically your y, your coefficient of y is the x derivative, or the y derivative of the right function. And then your x derivative is kind of normal. All right, so we got exact. How in the world do we solve exact? We use the exact formula or equation. Which is? Yeah, you do what I told you to do for exact. What did I tell you to do for exact? What did your book tell you to do? Is that equal to zero? Definitely not. It's already equal to zero. So you find intercepts. So we anti-differentiate L and M with respect to Y and X. Take the integral. And then you un yeah, so you union those two up. So this should already be on your cheat sheet, but to solve exact ODEs, you're going to union integral L dy and integral M dx. Hopefully you remember that. I'm pretty sure we did that at least once last class. And last week we probably did it five times or so. All right, I'm not going to solve, I'm not going to finish this one off. Even though you should be more proficient than you are, this will be a good one to practice. It's also in the book, and I'm pretty sure in the book they go and, f and finish it off. So we're going to go to the next one. So if I'm already finished for homework. Uh, exact is, I think, the fastest one to solve. Maybe separable is equally quick, but exact is what you want. It's as good as it gets when it comes to differential equations. So we're going to solve a different one now. So 
So this ODE has a problem. Why is it not even in the right form to begin? You have the form written down. Oh, there's an X that shouldn't be here. That X is a bad guy. So you can't just erase it. How do we get, how do we move that X out of there? Divide, Divide by X. So what we're really going to work with, so I'm going to multiply by 1 over X. Y prime plus 3 Y over X equals sine X over X squared. You can subtract that Q of X over if you want to. It doesn't matter when you move Q of X to the other side. Uh, but remember, that's P of X right there. That's super important. Oh, X cubed. Making sure you're paying attention, that's good. All right, so what I just put a box around is P of X. So any questions about that right there? Super important. So integrating factor, rho is e to the integral P X dx, which is e to the integral 3y over x dx. Now this looks a little bit scary. This is actually a very easy antiderivative. What algebra can I do first? So I can take out the 3y. Technically I'm doing a little calculus when I bring the y past the antiderivative. But y is a constant with respect to x. So I can bring the 3y outside. Now we got 1 over x dx, which is ln. And there's a few ways to deal with this. Algebraically, I think an easy way will be writing the 3y as a exponent instead of a coefficient. So coefficients mm -hmm. outside natural log become exponents inside the natural log. And now I get to cancel e in the ln, and I have x to the 3y power. Algebraically, there's a couple other uh, choices that would have simplified down, but this is just the one I went with. So integrating factor is x to the 3y power. So let's bring that back. We're going to multiply everything by that. So I'm going to write it in dy dx form now plus 3y over x. Oh no. Yeah, I think you're absolutely correct. <laughs> I, I circled too much. All right, so I should have written this 3 over x y. Should have written it like that. And that's our p of x right there. So there's no px is just 3 over x. Now, if I kept going, how would I know I was wrong if nobody was watching every move I was making? I very likely would have not gotten exact. Maybe I'd be the luckiest mathematician in the world and get exact off a mistake, but chances are probably not. Most of your mistakes like that are not going to lead you to exact. And if it does lead you to exact, hey, you know how to solve exact if you luckily happen to write down an exact ODE. Uh, so I think the only thing that changes are why disappears. And that's an easy mistake to correct. So I'm just erasing all the y's out of here. So we should be multiplied by x cubed. subtract sine and then multiply by dx. You can actually see exactness very easily. Just take an x derivative x cubed, that's 3x squared. It's a little bit more tricky, but take a y derivative of 3y x squared minus sine x. Your y turns into a 1, and you get 3x squared. So we do have exact, and again, I'm just going to write complete for homework. Do you 
Are we supposed to also multiply the through x for a kind of sign? I, I did that and it just knocked our denominator out. You're going to find that a lot of times it simplifies something. Maybe not everything, but a lot of times it's going to simplify something. Uh, I don't know if the last one. No, that wasn't the last one. There we go. This one kind of canceled the e to the x squared on this first example we did. Um, it did happen to move it somewhere else. So it's not always, they won't always simplify out, but it should always turn into exact. So now what we're going to do is move into Bernoulli, which is very similar to what we just looked at. This just allows higher powers of y. still an 11. So I'll put a little dividing line in here. So we went in uh, section 12 anymore? We're not in 12, no. But you said that after this, you're just going to skip it? Yeah. We still have, uh, yeah, just one more page of notes in 11. So this is a, this is a different type. It's not linear, but it's similar. So these are called Bernoulli. Eleven D sounds like a number close to seven D. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna look at Bernoulli equation. Starts out really similar: dy dx plus p x times y equals. Now there's a huge difference. There's a y to the n on the right side. So let's do the easy case. What happens when n equals 0? What do we have? We have exactly what we just did. So we got a linear. So I'll just write c above, all that work we did above. Uh, now we'll treat 1 separately. Case n equals 1. All right, this will be easy to write out. dy over dx plus pxy equals qxy. All right, let's think of ways to solve this. We should be able to solve this pretty easily. What are, what's some algebra I can do? Let's try to exploit the fact there's two y's here. So how do I get these y's out of here? Divide by y, or multiply by 1 over y. Now when I do this, I'm assuming y is not equal to 0, or else we're going to have uh, undefined. So this will work when y is not 0. No, if y is 0, it won't work. But if y is 0, that also if y equals 0, that's also true. So if y equals 0, that is a solution. It's kind of like when you factor and cancel. You're assuming that what you're canceling, you don't, you're, you're throwing away that solution if you keep working in algebra. So you've got to write down, oh, x is 4, or this other thing's happening. So in this case, y is 0, or you can follow the rest of the work I'm doing. Maybe I'll write y equals 0 is the solution. If you have where we are, you assume like we are considering everything, you get there at 0. Like, uh, what's it called? So, so y equals 0 is the solution. Now, when I divide by y, I'm assuming that it's not 0. So, one solution to the original ODE is y equals 0. Other solutions, I'm assuming to get them, y is not going to be 0 because I'm multiplied by 1 over y. So I got 1 over y dy over dx plus px equals q of x. All right, what can I do next? 
Let's subtract q of x to the other side, so I get equal 0, like every other ODE that we looked at pretty much. Why is this separable? Yep, first function is y, second function is x, just multiply by dx, and we got separable. So you solve separable ODEs back in calculus, even calculus one class technically, but definitely calc two. Alright, so we took care of 0, took care of 1, and now we're going to look at when n is not 1. So when n is not 1, we do not have separable. going to do is multiply multiply by 1 minus n times y to the negative n so let's do that right now I was a little quick with the power. I have y times y to the negative n, so it's y to the negative n plus 1, or y to the 1 minus n. All right, so you should be looking at this thinking this is really ugly. So we're going to have to do a little bit of cleanup here. So let's go through carefully. This should seem kind of familiar. What is the antiderivative right here? That's the antiderivative of just the y to the negative n part. Oh, look at that. Negative n plus 1 is basically the opposite of, or no, that is negative 1 minus n right there. So we're basically looking at an anti, a nice antiderivative. So that will be the actual antiderivative right there. I can erase this. That's the antiderivative. So it looked hideous, but there was a reason we did it, because it turns into this. <coughs> now I do have to be a little bit careful. There's still a y prime here. So I think this would be d dx of this term. So what happens when you take an x derivative of a function of y? You get the derivative like normal, but you also get a y prime times y prime. And this dy dx is the y prime right there. So this will feel a little bit strange. And the rest of the terms just stay how they are.
We're going to make a substitution. We're going to let u equal y to the 1 minus n. So what do we have to do whenever we make a substitution? Basically, I take the derivative of the variables that we're changing out. So not only is y going to leave, but also dy will leave too. So I need to get du equals, and I'll, I'll do this uh, the old school way, compute du over dy, and then I'll multiply by dy. So we get 1 minus n minus 1, which is just y to the negative n. So any questions on that right there? So now ready to make those substitutions. And we'll do this very carefully. So our first term is ddx of u. So u is y to the uh, 1 minus n, which is also y to the negative n plus 1, however you want to write it. Those two powers, those two numbers are exactly the same. Plus 1 minus n, now we have p of x times u, so I took out y to the 1 minus n replaced by u, equals, what is on the right side? I'm going to just put a box around, what is that? So it should be du dy. Any questions about that? That's probably the trickiest part of the substitution. So that is du dy times qx. Which is not good. We should not have y's in here anymore. This is not good at all. Mm. Let's see. So here's our u. So I did my calculus here correctly. I. So on the left, everything looks okay. It's the right side I'm a little bit worried about. Let's see where we started. Maybe I made a mistake further up. So Qx, 1 minus n, y to the negative n. Started with a y to the n on the 
Oh yeah. Jeez. Oh way up the top. I think the first thing I wrote down in this section. Wait, so we no past that, there's Bernoulli is what I want. Ah, oh, so there should have been a U to a Y to the N up there, which was missing. Jeez. Here we go. Alright, so there. So this actually should make things quite a bit easier. Okay, Q of X, Y to the N. So now we have no more y term on the right because the y to the n, y to the negative n are going to cancel out to 1. So we just get 1 minus n cube x. Alright, so we have no more y's anywhere. No more y's, no more dy's. So when you ever have three variables at one time, you want to figure out what in the world's going on. There's a really good chance something went wrong. So you should have two variables at any given step. So we basically get rid of our y's and replace them by some function of u. So of course our dy's better disappear as well. So that's what I was worried about. We still had that dy dx in there. Alright, so that's out. <coughs> What can we do next here? Well, if anything, we probably want to multiply by dx if we're going to do anything like that. So let me rewrite as du dx. Uh, let's get. Nope, I'm going to leave it in this form. I'm going to write the first linear, the first uh, form that I wrote down, which was linear ODE was dy over dx plus pxy equals q of x. How does this relate to our form that we got? It's almost the same. The y is now u, and there's this extra constant, but that's still a function of x. So it's a slightly different function of x, but it's function of x times this 1 minus n. Uh, there's this u is in the right spot. That basically what's making it linear. u is appearing exactly once, not next to the derivative of u. So what we have is a linear ODE in x and u, which you know how to solve. So I recommend solve a few more linear problems on your own before you jump into the Bernoulli, the higher power of linear uh, functions. So do the easy ones first, and this might be a really good time to use your textbook and just go through the first part of chapter 11 before they hit Bernoulli and solve a few problems and then come back and do the Bernoulli problems later. So I've basically told you uh, everything you need to know about Bernoulli. Uh, I haven't done an example yet, so I'll do one more, one example total, and then we will be out of this section. So Bernoulli is also one of the most useful, and it's the one I'm probably spending the least amount of time on. It's the most useful because it's very general, and it's also very quick and easy. But therefore, I still don't spend much time on it.